Now we'll move on. Now, as usual, what I tell you in the beginning, my chat window is open. So in case you have got a doubt, raise it on the chat window so that I can tackle it. And the participants window, I am going to minimize so I can see the screen. Okay. We did touch we did touch the anchoring, mooring, towing operation. Now I'll just revise that anchoring part because you know these are the places where you have got maximum number of accidents. Means the statistics puts anything between 35-40 percent accidents are during moorings, anchoring, and towing operation is something else that is added up because it's a generalized thing. Now the anchoring, like I told you, what we are dealing with. We're dealing with one something like a hook that is called anchor. It has got a moving part, even though you will never be able to move it with your hand. They weigh a lot. They weigh more than a truck. Okay? I'm talking like, you know, anchors do weigh anything 15 uh, tons, 20 tons also, depending on size of the ship. And based on the same principle, anchor is big. Anchor cable is big. Anchor cable is made up of different links, like chain. Each link is very heavy, and joining shackles, cantilever joining shackles, and all they are even heavier than the ordinary link. So there are studs in the link. The link is like this, and there is a stud in the middle, so that that stud purpose is it should not jumble up and get locked up. That is why there are studs inside. Now, when we deal with anchor, you know the one end is tied up on the ship in anchor chain locker called beater end. That is on the side wall of the anchor chain locker. That is beater end, which you can release, but there is a pin there, and in emergency, you can release it. And anchor chain lies in the anchor chain locker under normal circumstances. It is enclosed space. Then it comes out through spurling pipe, goes over the windlass, over the capstan. Now, what is the capstan? Capstan has got sort of grooves so that it catches each link of the chain and moves it. It is not like a smooth thing. It has got grooves. So that is capstan. So it goes over the capstan to hose pipe where the anchor chain is connected with anchor. In between hose pipe and the capstan, capstan is a part of windlass. In between that, you have got additional arrangements for securing anchor. That, because what happens is when you are at sea and your bow is dipping down, you know, it keeps on getting banging from the seawater because there is a flare. So as it bangs, the anchors get to beating. Now, if your anchor is loose, it will start moving. Momentum will be there and it will make hole in the ship side. So we secure anchor absolutely tight. Now, that is in between you have got the securing arrangement. Generally, there will be at least two. And in case of real bad weather, we if we are anticipating, we have got some additional one taken. So when you go for anchoring, that means the ship is going to reach port, your anchor should be ready for anchoring. What we do first, spurling pipe is also closed with cement. So we go, open the cover, break the cement, then we open, there are like, you know, two plates which are tied up with each other, we open them up, so that the chain is free to move. Then we go on horse pipe. Horse pipe also has got similar arrangement, but no cement. So horse pipe, we clear the guard, which is closing the thing, and now chain is clear in the horse pipe, where it is connected to anchor. You can actually see the crown of the anchor there, the head of the anchor, where there is a shackle. And when we have done these two things, then we open the securings on the anchor. Those are called anchor lashings, where we have to use sometimes lubricants and all, because what happens, you had bad weather, you were using 
some turnbuckles which may get corroded and it becomes little difficult. So you have to use some lubricant so that it moves easily and we open them. Then the next step what we do when we are close to anchoring, when we are close, what we do is now you can technically drop anchor right from top from the position where it is secure. But there can be issues because of corrosion basically because of corrosion and the banging from the sea on the anchor. So there can be small alignment issue or something. So what we do, physically I can't push it. What I do is I put it in the gear, means the capstan gets engaged with the windlass motor. Then I open the brake. The capstan has got brake, so I open the brake. Now, since it is locked with the uh, windless motor, it is not going to move. Then I rotate windless motor to lower the anchor. I lower the anchor to water level, just above the water. And then I tell bridge that, okay, anchor, and then, okay, I lower it above the water level, put the brake on again, remove the gear, means I remove the clutch, the dog clutch, so that it is dealing from the windless motor. So now anchor is strictly on its own and it can run out by gravity. Now, when I do that, there is a man who is handling the brake. One man handles the brake. He is generally the experienced person, bosun chief officer or a duty officer or whosoever is in charge will be standing clear. He will be looking at the anchor by putting his head over side just to ensure that nothing is around. And he is in touch. The duty officer is in touch with the bridge on walkie-talkie or internal system. You know, you can have a loudspeaker and, all, and the microphone, one of the systems. Whereas bosun, bosun is going to come in a firing line when anchor chain runs out because he is handling brake. Now that is, I'm talking of manual brake. You also have hydraulic brakes and a lot of things are there today. But we are take, talking manual brake. So he has got usual PPE, the proper no, usual one. In addition, he is going to cover up his eyes, have a helmet. The reason in, and sometimes he even needs to protect his breathing because what happens is when the chain runs out, there will be muck, there will be some sort of uh, corrosion which will break apart from the metal and come out like sandblasting in the direction. It is going to fly off. So eyes must be protected. The sound level will be high, so he is like this. Eyes are protected and he may have the breathing one because the dust which is going to fly, he will not be able to breathe properly. So now using three things, he has got now restrictions, limitations on his senses. He can talk, but there is a filter on top. He cannot hear basically because his ears are closed. Eyes, he has got goggles, so his view is restricted. So what he does is, he is looking at chief officer or duty officer, whosoever is there. So the communication between duty officer and the bosun is not verbal. It is with sign. Okay, chief officer will do like this, means drop the anchor. Then he will say, okay, hold it, means he shows which Okay, that means he tightens the brake. Then chief officer says, okay, he drops it further, like that. So there is a communication involved. This is a verbal communication for chief officer or duty officer and the bridge. That is a verbal. Duty officer to bosun is a sign language. So we have got these limitations. And we must not make mistake. Now, what is the problem is, the between duty officer and bosun, not much of chance of confusion. Not much of chance. But 
between the bridge means from the captain and the duty officer there can be confusions because first thing if if he is on walkie talkie then confusion chances are there why because anybody can be using that channel voice with the disturbance of wind and all is not that clear there have been accidents because i'll give you example and this accident actually happened uh, means you know on ships also this has happened but basically it happened an airline and there was a bad collision between the planes while taking off and after that the new course came in for aviation that was the cockpit uh, communication course and we also had we adopted from them and we also create similar course for merchant navy which is compulsory anyway so what happened that time was stand by for take off somebody said stand by for take off and the person who was hearing he did not hear stand by so he took off he took off when things were not clear they banged with other plane both the planes large number of passengers died so after that this communication became important like when we use word stand by stand by is only single word we use we don't use it with additional things we don't say stand by to, to let go anchor because you miss the stand by that guy will drop the anchor when you are on open channel like poki toki you can have confusions because one thing the wind is strong you can't hear clearly then additionally uh, accent today we have a large number of indians pakistanis bangladeshi sri lankans around their accent is identical you can have confusion i have seen it happening like i mentioned it last time but we were lucky that there was no damage but after that we became more careful in practical experience that we started using ship's name means if i am calling from bridge to forward so i will use the ship's name forward that means we know we are talking about the same ship because confusion can be there three four ships around all ready to anchor only one is actually in the right position to anchor others are approaching and the wrong one drops the anchor there will be total chaos so that is what happens with communications so that is one point you have to now when we deal with anchoring and all there are uh, what you say the regular test done windlass is tested winches are tested everything is tested then what we do is lubrication is done we make sure that all area is clear of uh, lubricants why because they can become slippery area should have non skid paint then on forecastle and sun wherever you do mooring you have got the zones marked snap back zones but theoretically whole area is a snap back zone even though there is more area with higher probability which is marked then when we are anchoring is what is the process we lower it to the water level after that instruction come you open the brake it runs out on own once it hits the bottom then generally we know the depth so around that time we tighten the brake the ship is moving so anchor drops here and the chain is like this and it goes up. but you slack it tighten it slack it tighten it and once everything is over then we also put the st- additional stoppers but during this operation what happens is you get blasted with the rust uh dust you have got some garbage with, like you know the old residues from the sea bed they can be hitting you all sorts of things happen so you have to be careful and in case chain runs out because of there is some bad judgment or the anchor brake fails you don't try to stop it you just let it go worst possible scenario it will break from the bitter end damage 
disappear. You must be in safe position always. When you are in safe position, you are safe. That is the criteria. Anchor which is lost with the chain can be recovered. Even if we don't recover it, it is insured. There will be inconvenience for some time till you get the new one. But, I, you know, you can get it. Human life or a part of a limb or limb cannot be replaced. So, under any circumstances, human being is more important. Don't worry about losses, anything. You are not there to worry about losses. Okay, that's one important thing for safety. Anyway, coming back to other way around, when we start heaving up anchor, now chain was lying on the seabed, so it is going to pick up mud and other things. So what happens is, we have got anchor washers. That means there is a deck water line the, where it supplies water with the pump and it has got opening nozzles in the hose pipe. So we open those valves and as you're picking up the chain, you keep on washing it. So all the dirt goes back in the sea. That is normal. Still, something may not go off. So that is the reason we have to be always careful. Now, that is about anchoring. There are additional things come, but basically the safety precautions for anchoring, moorings, everything is same. Mooring, you have got extra precautions to take because anchor chain is in stored position. It goes in a planned path. Whereas when you are doing moorings or unmooring, you are going to use the ropes, nylon ropes, polypropylene synthetic ropes, or specialized, but they are all synthetic or in some cases, wire or a combination of both. Now, rest of the things are same, but here there are more people handling the ropes. Now, ropes are on the drums, or ropes are also used on the whopping drum. Whopping drum is the end part of the windlass and winches, where you can put any rope and you can heave on it. So, what happens is the dangerous part comes there when you pass the rope first. That is one thing you have to be careful when you pass the rope. That you lower it slowly. Somebody, you know, first you throw a heaving line. That guy catches heaving line. Then you, somewhere in the middle of heaving line, you tie up the mooring rope. I pass it on. And other end of the heaving line you keep with you. So that once the eye goes ashore, he will open it, they will put the eye on the bit and give you signal, then you start heaving. But now you are co communicating with each other using heaving line. Then, when we pass the second rope and you start heaving the first rope, you, you are doing all this simultaneously. Now the rope what we use normally has got a breaking stress, each rope, about 100 tons. 100 metric tons, which is hell of a lot of, uh, you can say, strength. In case if it breaks, I don't know what to say. It means it can smash up anything. An ordinary truck is 20 tons. Oh, I mean big truck, huh? loaded. Loaded big truck is 20 tons. So you can imagine five truck worth of force hitting somebody. Don't stand a chance. Now, what happens is there are proper leads. The rollers are there. You just follow the same path. Then suppose you are heaving on whopping drum or you are using on the drums, normal drums, storage drums and the tension drum and all. So there, tension drums and all is easier as you heave. You just tighten the brake and declutch it. Uh, one minute. Huh? I'll just take one call. I don't know what it is. Hello. No, wrong number. Weird, no getting a wrong number. Okay. So, coming back to this part, you are handling ropes where a lot of tension is involved. Even heaving line, which is like your little finger, needs about 800 kilos to break. 
so anything any one of the thing breaking means it is absolutely dangerous situation so before use we always check all of it that it is in good condition then only we use it if it is damaged we don't use it when we pass the ropes we stay clear of it additional risk involved is there can be water there can be ice depending on the weather and we may pick up while handling the ropes it's possible the some of the sea water because the rope was picked up from sea so some water has landed so it can be slippery you don't stand here and there the most dangerous part comes when we transfer the load transferring load is i am heaving on the rope so it has got a tension because you're pulling the whole ship alongside okay the ship when we start talking about you're talking something like uh, 100000 tons load which you are dragging in the water with these ropes indirectly now coming back to the ropes you are transferring the load see if it is on the tension drums and all you don't transfer load you just tighten the brakes and you are okay if you are doing it manually that you are going to make fast on the bits bolts you heave through the guided path then you have to take a stopper stopper is a combination of smaller ropes that you take it in a particular way you stand clear hold it and then you slack take off the load so now the load is on the end of the rope which is which has gone ashore and on the stopper and beyond stopper it doesn't have load and that time people just in hurry they quickly take the turn so that the load can be transferred to the bolt that is one of the most dangerous part so that is where we don't allow inexperienced people uh, to take the stopper or hold the stopper we generally have experienced people handling it because it needs speed as well as sharpness in doing the job now that is where we do get into troubles people sometimes are too slow they find it extremely difficult in mooring operations or unmooring especially mooring operation you have to be quick so the lot of experience is involved and since you are quick you also have got additional risk because you are working under time pressure higher probability of making mistake that is why you need experienced people okay so this is what we are talking about here now when we throw heaving line we generally have uh, what we say monkey fish or what we say sometimes we have got a softer ring depending on because a lot of countries don't allow you hard thing they want it softer and why we are putting it so it gives the momentum when you throw so there are different ones but you cannot be having very hard work you can't use shackles and all because if it hit somebody on other side somebody will get badly hurt so we try to work out different ones traditionally we used to use monkey fist means there was a metal piece and wrapped up with the rope to make it heavy then now we have got different ones which are like softer so nobody should get hurt like weight not more than half kilo that is heaving line if we use messenger line like say heaving line can be about 8 12 mm 8 to 12 mm thick messenger line will be at least at least about 24 26 mm thick depending again you know what sort of load is expected to handle then all the decks there are anti skid you make sure they are clean no grease anywhere nothing you know means uh, accidents can happen without any warning so what we have got like you know we make sure in spite of you are having uh, anti slip uh, footwear still we ensure that we don't take any chances hai karke test karke dekho no it is same thing you buy your mobile phone or say forget phone you wear the watches na 
so those ones are written water proof till uh, 5 meters depth does it mean you leave it under uh, swimming pool just to take it you don't want to do that you don't want a chance even though you have a certain security assured you don't take chance with it the same way we don't take chance with safety now equipment is always inspected regularly before use regularly is one and before use also we check it there is a regular lubrication program everything is checked everything is moving there are no sharp edges anywhere in case you find some sharp edges developed because of reason we smoothen it out so those are the like you know hot work and not like you use grinders and not now mooring ropes under normal circumstances will not break while heaving normally no but it happen that is why we always assume it can happen and we take precaution and the normal things when you start looking at safe working loads and all of the winches everything it should not but still it can go wrong because during inspections uh, again we can say we are good with inspection that means you are maybe 95% good you are not going to get 100% good inspection any time in life okay now generally we have got three directions of ropes one goes longitudinally forward so in for, forward part we call them headlines why because the head headlines then opposite to headline is a back spring because it goes backwards similarly stern will have stern line which goes back and a back spring which heads in forward direction these two are to stop fore and aft movement of the ship when you have made a uh, secure the ship breast lines go outward ship their job is to keep ship alongside so normal uh, pattern under good weather will be 2 plus 2 plus 2 two spring two headlines and two breast lines two spring lines aft two breast uh, stern lines aft and two breast lines aft this is the standard pattern now the problem comes you are doing it from height so they dip down so the dip angle is something one has to be careful if it is excessive you are not getting the strength you know you are going to work the forces in 3d that means three axis x y z so how much is the proportionate amount on x axis proportionate amount on y axis is important the z axis is actually wasted one but we don't have options there are different mooring arrangements coming in today we also have the suction pads where ship goes there and their suction pads hold the ship that's also successful today but they are basically high tech ship whose time is very expensive okay the short length very short length and all no money it depends you know I mean you don't get perfect thing anywhere there is always some compromise and based on that compromise we add a props sometimes it happens that you don't get good leads so instead of 2 2 2 i might make it 322 or i might make 422 like that depends on the situation but sending one rope or four ropes it is the same procedure so one rope procedure applies to all that's where we worry about safety another thing what happens when you got the loose ropes to handle manually you have to be careful that you don't stand in the loop you know you must have seen in movies there is a loop lying there somebody stands in the middle you have seen it in movies anyway so suddenly somebody pulls it up and your leg is caught and you start hanging upside down in this case this is not planned for upside down the loop means it will just crush your leg completely that sort of force is involved so forces involved are simply of monstrous proportion that is why you have to be careful when lines are under strain 
we always stand clear and we do not get into snapback zones we always avoid snapback zones in any case you get used to it over a period because if you just read only this article you will start thinking it is such a bad thing that you shouldn't be going nearby but don't worry there are things which this is like same thing driving car or something i can talk all negative things about how accidents happen but that doesn't mean accidents are going to happen every day similar okay now we also use wires once in a while you'll find an odd ship is using mooring wire they are much thicker they are very heavy and it means lot of mechanical things like you know when you pass it on also the shore guys can't heave it with the hand so they also have got a winch there so they pull it with the winch and put it and on then there is a combination we don't use natural fiber ropes okay we don't use natural fiber ropes for moorings because simply the size of the ships have become so big that you will never be able to handle natural fiber rope then what happens is if you are going to use synthetic fiber rope and you are going to handle it manually that case the stopper is involved if stopper is always the rule is simple natural for natural synthetic for synthetic and for wire ropes we use chain now this is another common mistake i have noticed is chain stopper chain stopper is not when we refer chain stopper it means chain stopper that is used for tying up wire ropes to the bollards that is what is chain stopper other chain stopper if you are referring to only if you are referring to only the anchoring then the chain stopper is something like gelatin those are the ones you put and you lock them up so that chain doesn't run out this is all after for securing the chain huh? okay we were somewhere here then i touched it there are different types of fair leads there then there are panama chalk that is those are fixed ones which are basically to make fast tugs because if you are going to pass a rope and the ship is always surging surging means there is a small movement of the ship maybe uh, 30 cm 40 cm for an hour uh, because of the weather so that is all absorbed in a shock but the ship actually moves the ropes might stretch and hold stretch and hold that's another issue so in that case every rope should be on the fair lead so what happens is when rope moves the fair lead also moves so there is no friction between the rope and the metal now what we another thing what we don't cross the ropes when the ropes should be touching each other we don't cross them and we never cross wires and the ropes any time because wire will cut the rope simple so there are different different types of stoppers there are basically we use the double stopper single stopper is used with the chains and that you will do it in the lab now this is where we finish this chapter always remember everything is very logical and you never ever take shortcuts take shortcuts you can have disastrous things come to the end that is the remaining chapters now i have not covered them for variety of reasons there is a special chapter for roll on roll off ferries then there is something about cargo then something about this all will be covered up in the cargo work when you start doing it now port towage industry port towage industry means the tug boats generally the tug boats who tow the barge or tug boats which will be towing the ships or assisting the ships 
for birthing or unbirthing. Now, the ships serving offshore oil gas installations are supply vessels and basically supply vessels. They are part and parcel of offshore uh, oil fields. Then the offshore has got a lot of industries, you know, means oil industry has got a lot of weird looking stuff. But those things are not supposed to move. They are supposed to go there. So they just travel short distances. If they are to travel long distances, then the specialist arrangements are made. Okay. Ergonomics is something about designing. How you design it. So this is where we are finishing the syllabus. Now... Five minutes, I'm going to tell you something. Some of you have finished all those questions I gave for SOT. Done well. Many of you haven't finished it. And now I'm going to get, because teaching part is over, I'm going to get more time. And I'm going to check every one of you. And based on all these things, internal marks will be covered. And you all have been asking me, now I still get queries, sir, which rule is important in ROR? Does it make any sense? I told you all the rules are required and your syllabus defines it very clearly. So many rules, you have to give word by word. Why? Because definition is involved or something or the other. Other rules in your own words. They mentioned it clearly. So what is the question? Next is, that is ROR test. There is a chapter on ROR test. Some of you have done very well. There is no doubt. I will give you five stars out of five. Very well. Means 25 it seems to be becoming more and more common now. So Hall of Fame will become bigger now. But guys who have done well, some are taking regularly and that is what I want. Don't worry about the results. And what I have found strange is some of the students who got good marks in the previous semester are afraid of taking ROR test. ROR test, why I want you all to take is ROR is not something that last minute you just mug up and say I am okay. No. ROR, you do it regular basis, you will be very good. ROR is our bread and butter. ROR and egg dish. If you know these two things well, 90% job is covered up because that is watch keeping. Watch keeping becomes comfortable. I have met people, let's see, who were so nervous because of lack of knowledge, ulcers, sweating from palms, all sorts of things I have seen. I don't want any one of you to end up like that. ROR, everybody has to take test and I'm going to check. I'm going to check because I get the results. All I need to put it are the search words and I get everybody's track record. Okay. So, especially the guys who all had over 85% marks in last semester must take ROR test. They seem to be avoiding it maximum. Others are taking Others have accepted that, yes, we have to tighten up more and they are all okay, fine, very good. And some of the performance are excellent, there is no doubt about it. Means this is the first batch I see who have done so well with our test. Including, I am talking about the people who came back from C to go for second match exam. Even their ROR test results were not as good as some of yours. So that is one. SOT, ensure. You finish whole thing. ROR, I am going to put up some more tests so that you practice it. But it will go a little easy on ROR because I want you to take ROR tests, not uh, manual types, the MCQ one. I will put, and by end of this month, we should be talking of only what you say, study leave. That is my idea. I'm going to give you then some paper to solve which you will be able to judge yourself what you need to improve because everybody is, uh, it's a customized thing. 
everybody's things will be different like i need to do chapter this this part somebody else needs something else so that we have to identify we identify we do it no blind following okay and i have noticed also some of you log in just for few minutes okay i understand some of you get cut off and all but uh, don't develop any pattern like that in case somebody has told you and some of you probably have left the phone with somebody and said this time you just keep on logging in and keep quiet don't do anything now this is where you know when uh, then i like to start calling and checking every one of you it doesn't make sense now it will be little relax because the first uh, part is over syllabus is covered now you go through and let me know if we have missed out anything in syllabus or we need to repeat something you have got the list of important questions you should be able to answer all if you can answer all you are ready okay now i shall release the control now we are 72 here i am unmute all are the congratulations dudi is there today you want flag diagrams okay i will load flag diagrams okay flag diagram i will load kya kya 